Lord, I'll do whatever you say. And he, he causes me to be some spiritual kook. You know what I'm talking about? What if he causes me to, you know, what if he did, does the Abraham thing with Isaac and I got to lay my, not just my child down, but I got to lay my life down. And I, I mean, everything that I desire, everything, I, don't, I just don't know if I can surrender all. But it, guess what? God's plans for you are so good. He is so good. And we're going to talk a little bit about that this morning. So um, let's just bow our heads and close our eyes before we get into the word this morning. Father, we thank you so much for leading us here today. We thank you that you said that the steps of a righteous man are ordered of you. And thank you, Lord, that you are uh, ordering our steps today. We thank you that we have eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. 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 Well, we're, we're going to close the series this morning, uh, a series we called Questions, and we're going to answer, um, I believe it would be uh, the number one question amongst the church. Uh, the number one question I think that would be the church and everybody, uh, not so much the church, I'd say the world more than the church, but even that had entered the church we talked about last week, and that is why do bad things happen to good people. You know, we've, we've all had that question or we've been sitting in a hair salon and we hear somebody talk about what happened to, you know, so-and-so and God must believe, you know, I mean, they must be really, really tough because God won't give you more than you can handle, right? You know, and we heard these kind of statements and, and really uh, the people try to come up with an explanation and they always pull, blame God for what they don't understand. You know, and um, it's like that goodwill or God will box. You know, you just throw it in there because you just don't understand it and you really don't want it. So you just must be God. And uh, so we talked about that last week. But this week we're going to close this uh, series is how do I know God is actually talking to me? I think more than anything, uh, the, the number one thing that the enemy fights for against you on is God's word to you. And so how do I know? And I'm talking God's voice. I'm talking about you hearing God's voice because his word to you, his direction to you is his provision that for you. Him speaking to you is, is his provision to you. So this morning we're going to take a look at how do I know God's speaking to me? How do I know what he's saying? How do I know if he's actually talking? Is he talking? I mean, I, I, how do I know these things? How do I know God is speaking? So really, this, this morning's question that was asked by multiple people, how do I know if God's speaking to me, is simply a question that's like this. How do I recognize God's voice? Anybody ever, ever, anybody ever been there? I know I, know I have. I know, and and if, you've been, if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time, when you come into a, you'll come into a season or you'll come into or at to a crossroads, rather, and you'll say, God, which way do I go? I mean, do I go right or do I go left? Do I stand still? Am I supposed to turn around? What, Lord, I need, I need help here. And, and, you know, there's other times in your life it seems like you can just navigate life and even, and I'm talking about being spirit-led. I'm talking about, you know, knowing in your heart, uh, even on big decisions sometimes, it's like, yeah, I just know in my heart that I'm supposed to go that way or I'm supposed to go that way. But sometimes you come into a place where you got to, you go, Lord, is that you? Is that me? What, what's, what's, what's going on here? Help me. Help me, Lord. And so I want to, I, I believe um, if we understand God's voice and we know that his plans for us are good and the Bible says he prepared good things for us to walk in, just because he prepared them doesn't mean that you're going to walk in them. Okay, it's up to us to walk in his will. But how are we to walk in his will if we don't know his will? Did you know he has a will concerning everything that you do? Did you know that God wants to talk to you about everything that you do? God wants to talk to you about everything that you do because God, you know, you've heard the statement about religion or relationship, but re a relationship is formed with communication. If there's no communication, then there's no relationship. And God so wants a relationship with you. He wants to talk to you about the groceries that you're going to buy. He wants to talk to you about the color that you're going to dye your hair that you're not going to like if you get it that color. You know what I'm talking about, ladies. You know, he wants to talk to you about where to sit in a deer stand. I'm telling you, he wants to talk to you about things that we, and I'm telling you, amen. But he wants to talk to you about these kind of things. And he, why? Because he's all about a relationship. He's all about, and I, I, did, I was thinking about this as I was um, getting ready this week uh, for this, this, this morning's message, but, you know, I just want to ask this, have you do a, just a real quick checkup to the one that's sitting to your right or to your left, your husband or your wife. How is your relationship? I'm not talking about the fact that you've been married for 10 years and that you're sleeping in the same bed. I'm asking, I want to ask this, how is your communication? If, if you didn't have the thing in common that you sleep in the same bed and you come to the same house and you had the same children, 
what would you know about each other? What, what do you talk about that's not the, thing, the only thing that you have in common that you can't separate? What's your communication? What is your fellowship like? Do you have fellowship? If you don't have fellowship, what happens is there's a whole lot less of a relationship. And when you don't have a good relationship, listen to me, this is where the enemy can easily get in. Relationship which is born out of fellowship or communication. So we're going to talk this morning about hearing God's voice and how God wants to, he wants you to know his voice because the Bible says that we know his voice and as strangers we don't follow, but he wants us to know his voice because he doesn't want the enemy getting in. As a matter of fact, he's jealous for you. Think about, think about your relationship with your husband or your wife. You don't want some other, uh, if I have a relationship, I do have a relationship with my wife, so me and, me and her, okay? If some guy comes between us, it's not going to be good. You know what I'm talking about? Because I, and I, I, and you might think I'm a little bit nuts a little bit, but I'm a jealous guy. I really am. And, um, and, and I think it's a good jealousy. Um, just like the Lord says he's jealous for his, but I'm jealous for my wife. And so much to the point where I, I, I didn't know how I'd be able to handle some of these things. When I was in fourth grade, I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, and I, in fourth grade, and my, my testimony is that I, I went over to a friend's house and I saw a bunch of crazy nonsense um, pornography that just was like, it, it hurt my heart, but yet I liked it, okay? But yet it made me, th- my mic just went up, it made me think this, Lord, don't let me ever marry a girl that's kissed another man. I know that sounds crazy, but that's what, that, that was my prayer at that, at that time. After we moved away, I just said, Lord, we moved away from that to where I, where I didn't have access to all that stuff at our neighbor's house. We would go, I'd go over there way too often. And, and, um, and I remember praying this prayer because I was like, it was so just not right. You know, everything was just so not right. And I remember praying this prayer, Lord, let me marry a girl that's never kissed another person, never been with another person. And I had never kissed another person. Now I did, in my heart I had, but I never had. And, and, and guess what I got to marry? A girl that never had kissed another person. I, we, my first kiss was right here. Her first kiss was there. That's it. And ain't nobody laying lips on her other than me. So anyway, but, I, but God's jealous. And he doesn't, want, he doesn't want something coming between you and him. And the enemy wants to come between you and him. And he wants to destroy you. He wants to, to use you and destroy you. So let's, let's get going here this morning. So um, how, do, how do I know God's talking to me? Or really, help me, help me recognize God's voice, God's voice. And so we know that this is one of the number one things he attacks is, is our ability to hear. And why did we say that is? Because his direction to me is his provision for me. Now listen, Satan cannot, listen, Satan can't stop God's word, but he can steal it. This is why it's, it's his direction to us is his provision for us. And you know what? When God gives you a direction, Satan can't stop it, but he can steal it. Okay? He can steal God's word to you concerning your finances, concerning your health, concerning your marriage, concerning your business, concerning any of those things. And this is what Satan wants to see you what? Steal, he wants to steal from you. He wants to kill you. He wants to ultimately destroy you. And how does he do that? He does it by stealing God's word. Matthew 4, 4 says this. It is written, because this is, again, you hearing God's word is, is, is life or death. Uh, Matthew uh, chapter 4, verse 4, Jesus said, It is written, man cannot live on bread alone, but every word that proceeds uh, out of the mouth of God. Every word that comes out of the mouth of God, that's how you and I are to live. There's, there's, a, there's a, I, I would say, a dimension of life that if we don't hear God's word, we don't ever tap into. Or we live in a place where we're just, just tired all the time. And I'm not just talking about naturally tired. I'm just talking about just we're looking for one high, you know, one big thing to, or, you know, and, and sometimes uh, Christmas is big, but for other people, Christmas is like the worst time of the year because of all the things that are going on. We're looking for something and, 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 and it's because we're not tapping into God's words to us. Okay. So, um, let's keep going here. So, uh, again, we know that Satan's not after our religion. He's after our relationship, but let's, and how, how did he start doing that? Genesis three, one, he did this. He, uh, he came he came right away to, the, to, to, to Adam, and he questioned God's word. And this is how, this, this statement, how do I know God's talking to me? This is a question. This is, this is a very big deal. There's three questions that he predominantly asks you and me, or that gets us to ask ourselves. 
And um, how many of you know if you're uh, take a kingdom divided against itself can't stand? If you are beating yourself up, if you're questioning your own ability, well, he, he's got you. Because, he, you know, it's like, hey, let me just put the, plant this question in your heart, and you can question yourself, and I'll go work on somebody else. Because, you know, Satan is not omnipresent. That means he can't be everywhere at once like the Lord can. So he can, as long as he can get, get one of his little guys, you know, one of his, hey, let me whisper in his ear that. And, okay, good. He's thinking that on his own now. Good. He's thinking that on his own now. And we're going to, I'm believing for strongholds to be broken. When stronghold is something that is built or erected in your or my mind for the enemy to come from that place and wreak havoc in our lives. I'm believing this morning for strongholds like that to be broken, that I can hear God's voice. I do know his voice. And, and so we, we know that. Satan gets, he comes and he wants us to question God's word. Here's how he comes. Number one, if you're right taking notes today, I have, I think, uh, three or four different things. I'm going to tell you three things. That it, it, so number one, how does Satan, how does, how does Satan, these are the three things that Satan gets us to question concerning God's voice. Number one, maybe I didn't hear right. Anybody ever do that? Anybody ever feel like you totally heard God tell you about this business deal or he to- you totally heard him tell you to marry this woman or you, t- you, I mean, you know that you know that you know in your knower when you make the decision that it was God. But here's what happens. You ask yourself this question. Well, maybe I didn't hear right. Why? Because something happens. Because there's a storm. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You, you enter the storm and you're like, oh, well, maybe I miss God. And this is what he says. He comes to you and says, maybe you just didn't hear right. So rather than addressing the storm in your life, because God told you to go to the other side. You know, there's a a story where Jesus told the disciples, hey, go to the other side. He's asleep on the boat because he knows where he's going. And the disciples are like, we're drowning. Do you even care? And we're saying, we ask, Satan will get us to ask this question by saying, well, maybe you just didn't hear. Maybe God really didn't say that. Did God really say? Genesis 3, 1, this is how he works. Did God really say? And so rather you try to seek shelter from the storm instead of, no, I'm going through it and I'm talking to it. Because God's direction to me is on the other side. God's provision to me is, is through that word. It's through that course, if you will. Through the course is the prize. I've been playing this game. Um, I got it in the deer stand in Oklahoma, and my wife's giving me a hard time. Um, how many of you ever remember Galactica? Galactica? It's like, choo, choo, choo. It's a spaceship game, and you shoot these aliens, and they're trying to get you, right? But, but there's, in this game, after, after you pass, like, the first four levels, you get an upgrade. You know what you get an upgrade to? A cooler ship. So instead of just boom, 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 it's boom, 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 boom. So you got two. You're like, yeah, I got a double ship. And then after you get the double ship, you get the triple fire. You're like, choo-choo-choo-choo. You're like, yeah, I just got to get to the next biggest, greatest, baddest ship. And, um, and, you know, y'all think I'm, I'm a little funny, but you know what? The things that you're actually looking for, they're not just, they're, they're through the course. It's, it's through God's direction to you. You got to go to the other side. You got to get through, you got you to gotta hone your skills, if you will, in, in, what, in, the, in the season that you're in. And as you develop in those skills, you'll be ready for that, that next thing. How many know what I'm talking about? Anyway, let's keep going. So he asked you that question. Maybe you didn't hear right because of the, the storm. So you heard God's word, but here he just came and he stole it. Maybe you didn't hear right. Or maybe this is number two. So maybe you didn't hear right. Here's the number two. And I I would say this would be the number, maybe even the number one way that that Satan would deal with you and I. You can't hear. You can't hear God's voice. Because you, you, you started out down that road where you heard God and you knew in your heart. And, and, and a baby Christian more than anybody else, seems like they can hear the voice of God. You know how, why? Because the same voice that led them to know that they needed a Savior, that was God talking to them. You know in your heart when you're like, man, I just feel God tugging my heart. Well, that's him saying, hey, come to me. Hey, I love you. Hey, I want you. So there's that, there's that tenderness in a new or a baby Christian that they know and they hear God's voice. You ever seen how, like it seems like somebody that's newly saved, they see God move all the time in their life, and, and someone says, well, that's just God's grace because they're a baby. Well, yeah, maybe, but part of God's grace to them is God's word to them, and because they can hear God's word because they're not, they're not callous by all of their Hey, I missed it. I guess I can't hear God. They, they walk in step with God's voice or his direction and so his provision. Am I, are you following me a little bit? Okay, so I, I'm, I know I talk fast, but these were the, 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 the answer to no, see? There you go. See, you catch all that. Um, in order to answer 
these questions and, and, and to what I feel like would give you adequate ammunition to fight the enemy, which is his word, um, there's, there's kind of a, a decent amount to cover. Okay? So that's why I talk fast so you can listen. If you can listen fast, you can always go back and listen to it again. But, um, so maybe I just can't hear. He comes to us that way. Number two, he comes to us. Maybe I just can't. I can't hear God's voice. But let me just remind you what he said in John 10. John 10, 3 through 5. It says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice. And he's ta- he, he likens here us to sheep and him to the shepherd. And it says his sheep recognize his voice and come to him. So this is, uh, number one, how you know you can hear God's voice. If you ever came to him to begin with, when he opened the door, he said, he, he said, he said, I'm knocking, I'm knocking. He says, he, and he's got the door open. He says, come on, come on, I love you. Yeah, you don't know what I did. He said, yes, I do, I do. And that's why I'm knocking, because I, I love you. You don't even know what, I, he said, no, come, come, come. And he says this, and he says this. He says, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep recognize his voice, and they come to him. So you've heard his voice before. Say, say, somebody say that with me. Say, I've heard his voice. Okay, so, and you came to him, and he says he calls his own sheep by name, and he leads them out, and he gathers, uh, and he has gathered his own flock, and he walks ahead of them, and they follow him, because why? Because what? They follow him because they know his voice. Say that, I know his voice. I know his voice. So we got to settle that lie. I know his voice. Next time the enemy comes, well, I just can't hear God. Shut up. Don't say what he said. Say what God said. Why do we repeat what the devil says instead of what God says? We're honoring the enemy, not the Lord. I know his voice. And the strangers I do not follow. It goes on to say, um, it says, that, and they, uh, they won't follow a stranger. They will run from him because they don't know his voice. So number one, we, we, we say, well, maybe I, I miss God. Or maybe I, maybe I, maybe I. Um, we say, maybe I didn't hear right. Number two, we say, well, I just can't hear. And then number three is, this is the one where we get to, was that just me? So maybe I didn't hear right. I can't hear. And then you go, wait a minute. No, no, you know what? I can't hear because that's what the, the Bible says. And then he gets you going like this. Was that just me? Like, was that the pizza I ate last night? Was that, what, what, was, what, what, what was that? What is, what, was that me? Was, is, is that me that's talking? And, 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 and what happens is, is we're really scared. We're afraid that what I heard could be me. Because what if I say it was God and it wasn't God and now it was me and then I F-A-L-E, fail. Then I fall short. Then I, or, or what if I say that and, and I don't make it and, and other people see me? I'll tell you what, fear of man Fear of man will keep us in a place that, that where we, it keeps us from hearing God's voice. I can't wait. We're gonna, I'm going to do a series next year on honor for the Lord. And I was watching, and I'm going to kind of give you a little uh, one-minute snippet of what I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share. There's a video I was watching. Um, um, Lockheed Martin. Anybody ever heard Lockheed? Like Lockheed uh, the, um, anyway, they build planes. Uh, Lockheed, anybody ever heard of this place? Lockheed, anybody, anybody help me out? Okay. They go, go. We got a lot of people that have. They build planes, but they don't just build like uh, 747s. They build planes that you hadn't seen before. They build planes that are the most top secret thing in all of the military. They have technology that we, they don't. They, they don't even know the technology that they're using yet. Why? Because the, part of their and there's this video they talked about how they give us permission to fail. They give us permission to fail. So guess what we do? We try, and we have the money and the funding to, to try new forms of propulsion, to try new forms of, of aerodynamics, to try new forms of technology that we don't even know how to get there, but we're putting these things together, and we end up coming up with things, and we're, we're, so, we're operating so far ahead of our time because we have permission to fail. Can I just say this? I believe we would be operating a whole lot ahead of our time concerning miracles, concerning signs and wonders. If, listen, if you gave yourself permission to fail and said, wait a minute, it's not up to me, it's up to God. And so you know what, even if if I miss it, if I miss it, if I have permission to fail, guess what? I could be light years ahead of where I'm at because what if, what if, what if, no, 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 it doesn't matter what if because I know who, you know what I'm talking about? I got to have permission. You know what? Well, ha, 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 look at you. Uh, Excuse me, you're flying on a 747 and, and uh, you don't even recognize what this is. We can break the speed of sound and we cannot, we cannot make the sonic boom. 
That's crazy. That they can, that this is what they're working on. I was, re, I was like, whoa, they're showing this video that we can break the speed of sound and not produce a sonic boom. That has been the greatest problem for travel with a supersonic jet because you're breaking super loud noise, a sonic boom. You remember? Sonic boom. Remember? Okay, Street Fighter. All right. All right, showing my age there. That was a Sega Gen- was it Sega Genesis or Super Nintendo? So, uh, yeah, anyway. All right. Sonic boom. All right. So, okay. So there's those three things. Was that me? I can't hear. Or, or number one, number one, I didn't hear right. Number two, I can't hear. Number three, was that me? And, and we, we, we get to be afraid. Um, and so why, why is Satan so after God's word to us? Well, 1 John 5, 4 says this, and we're going to take some time to talk about this, then we're going to talk about how to hear his voice, okay? But 1 John 5, 4 says this, okay? And this is why you're having this question, and, and people have this question, the church has this question all the time, because Satan understands that this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our, what? Faith. 1 John 5, 4 tells us, the victory that overcomes the world, it's our faith. It's our faith. Now, I want to turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Can you give me those boxes under your chair? Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, and this is something that the Lord just, he laid out uh, for me. You might say it doesn't sound uh, a whole lot like t- hearing God's voice, but you're going to see it here in a moment. Can I get a volunteer, any volunteer? Jamal, come over here. You'd be a good volunteer. Um, let's see here. And we're going to read here. There we go. Is that up? Oh, all right. There you go. Um, so we're going to read, and I felt like an object lesson sometimes would be the best thing for us because we'd understand what the Word says. Hop up on that stage real quick for me. So let's read it. 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 through 3. He says, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and I have not love, I have become a sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy, how many of you would say that the gift of prophecy would be amazing? I mean, just like you could tell the future. You know, like telling the future, and, and, and I'll tell you what, a gift of prophecy. Um, he says, and, and understand all the mysteries and have all knowledge. And though I have all faith so that I could move mountains, but I have not love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to, to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned, but I have not love, it profits me. What does it profit me? Nothing. Profits me nothing. So, if I have, or if I have faith, excuse me, goes on to say at the end of the chapter it says these three remain: faith, hope, and love. Pull, pull that up for me. I think it's uh, just look down First thir- Corinthians thirteen. I think it's like nine. What is it? Thirteen. 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 Pull, pull it up there. These three remain, faith, hope, and love. So these three remain, faith, hope, and love. So these are the three that he has. He has faith, he has hope, and he has love. But if he has faith, but he doesn't have love, he's profited nothing. So you can't have, you can't have victory that overcomes the world if you don't have love. So you can have faith, you can have hope, but if you have lo- don't have love, you have nothing. But you can have, you can have, you can have hope. You can't actually even have hope without faith. But here's what I, w- I want to talk about: If you don't have this, these two come away. So if you don't, if you don't have this, this, this box, this box is not a part of you. You don't get to have that. You have these. If you don't have this, you don't have this. You can't have any of this. You can't have faith. Or victory over what you're facing in this world, okay, if you don't have this. So what Satan is attacking is not so much, this again, he's, he's attacking your relationship or your love, the, the relationship or the character and God's love for you. Because if he can take away the love that's in you and for you, God's love for you, then guess what? He can take your victory and you know what he really can take? He can take your ability to stand. Having done all the stand, what did he tell us? Stand there for hope. Hope is the picture that, that when love provided his word, faith, it produced a picture that keeps us standing in a place to receive. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. But guess what? You're not going to receive what faith, what God's word said, and love provided if you don't have this. 
These two, right here, produce this, hope. Now, you can, you can go sit down. Faith, hope, and love. The greatest of these is love. If you don't have love, you don't have what? Anything. You don't, you don't have faith. You don't have victory. If you don't know the love of God, and this is why Satan's after our relationship, is because he knows that the foundation of everything is love. And God's love for you. Now I want to read this right here. 1 John 4, 18. It says this. It says, there is no fear in love. There's no fear in love. But perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with, say this with me, punishment. Fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. You know, one of the, and I, and I shared this a little bit ago, but one of the number one reasons that we don't hear God's voice is because we're, we don't really know how much he loves us. And the fact that we haven't settled in our heart that he's the father, not just the father, but our father, and we're his children. And because we're his children, he desires to speak with us. God wants to talk to me. You got you to gotta understand this and settle this in your heart. God wants to talk to you. God wants to talk to you. But here's what happens. And this is where the, the character of God has been, 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 been demolished and ran over and, and chewed up and spit out and everything else. It says because what? Uh, put the scripture back up there, how there's... Fear, it says, it says, because fear has to do with punishment. And so we, we hear about God's love, but here's where we're still at. We're still at this place of punishment. Like, you know what I did last night? How could God want to talk to me? I mean, do you know what happened? You know where I'm at? Do you, does, does he know that I don't, don't read the word? Does he know these things? Does he know? Does he, well, absolutely he knows. But here's where we're still at, and we, we're still in this place of fear because fear has to do with punishment. But love has to do with, listen, judgment. Now, here's the, here's the difference. Punishment, you're getting punished for something that you did. And how many of you know we all fall short, and we all, we know, all know this. We all know how, how really how, how undeserving of some good things we are, if we we're all real honest. And so when we come to God, we come based in this place of fear, knowing our shortcomings, instead of coming to God knowing that he is a God of judgment, not a God of punishment. God is a God of judgment, not a God of punishment. You're saying, what are you saying, Pastor Nate? I'm saying that God judged your sins through Jesus. And so when something happens, he judges that. And you know what he judges that? Hey, you fell short. And this is what he, you know what he does? Oh, yeah, that's paid for. So this, this is, the, our, God, our God is a judge. He's the righteous judge. He's not the punisher. People, here's where we're still at. We think he's, he's out there. He, we can't come to him because of fear of what? Punishment. Well, guess what? Jesus came and he paid the price, and now God, is, he's not the punisher, and never was he wanting to be the punisher, but now something has been paid, and so rather than before Jesus came, and judgment, he was the judge, judge he had to say, man, I gotta, you're going to have to get that. You're gonna, oh, man, I'm sorry, but you're going to reap that. But he said, that's not my heart. That's not what I desire, but, but he still stayed in this place of judge. The only difference is, is Jesus came, and he came knocking on your door, and you were hearing his voice, and here's what he said. And this is what we got to catch, guys. We have to catch this if we're going to hear God's voice and desire to hear his voice and not be afraid that what he has to tell us is for our good, is we have to understand that he is not the punisher. He is the judge. And what he's judging is according to what has been done. And when Jesus said it was finished on the cross and that, sin, that, that our sins were paid for past, present, and future, when you receive Jesus as Lord and you call him Savior, when something, when something happens, you can come boldly to the throne of grace and, and get everything that you need. What are you coming to his place to hear? His word. But we're afraid, and it's, we're afraid, and Satan, the Bible says, he is the accuser of the brethren. Listen, it doesn't say of the world. It says of the brethren. Why? Because if he can get you afraid of God's view of you, he will keep you from coming, and he will, he, he will keep... He will keep your ears silenced. When God's character is jeopardized in your eyes, his voice is silenced. You could write that down because that's good. But when God's character is jeopardized in your eyes, his voice is silenced. And we shared this last week. A.W. Tozer said the, no, the, the most important thing for you and I to, to understand or in life is our view about God. The most important thing about us is how we see God. 
Because how you see God determines everything else. Because if, if his character in your eyes is jeopardized, it, 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 it silences his voice because we don't know that we want to even hear. Okay. So let, let's pick up here and let's talk about hearing, hearing God's voice. Hearing God's voice. You know, I love, I love this about how faith, okay, love is the foundation, but love God's love gives us, gives us a word which produces faith, and it's the love of God, which is his goodness and all that, and, and his word that produces us an expectancy or a hope to keep us in a position to receive. This is what it, his love with his word keeps us in a position to receive. God says things to us all the time. God's still talking. God's still talking. But when we don't have love, we, he can speak to us all we want. But guess what? That victory... It's not victory because we don't have that love. And so we don't say in a place when God speaks to us, we go back to number one. What, well, did I really hear? Because we hit a course that, that we, is a little rocky or a little bumpy. And so we don't have the strength to stand and stand there for to receive what he has. I want to read this verse. You may have heard this. It says uh, in Psalms 27, 13, it says, I would have lost heart. I would have lost heart unless I would believe, unless that I believe that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Here's what he's saying. I would have lost heart if I didn't have hope knowing God was good and he gave me a word that he said he would. He's good and he would. And now I haven't lost heart. So now I can guess what? I, I can keep standing. Hope keeps us in the position to receive what God said. That's what hope, that's why hope's so powerful. And we think, oh, well, hope, well, you know, we don't teach on hope enough. But hope is the mixture of faith and love, the foundation of which is love. God, God said that God's good and that he said that he would keeps me going, okay, I'm ready. I'll, I'll have that full, full healing. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for what you've done. Thank you. Uh, I'm still standing for my provision. Okay. So that gets us through this part of kind of understanding why Satan is so after hearing our, our, our ability to hear. Now we're going to really take some time to answer the question, how do I know God's speaking to me? What does his voice sound like? How can I position myself to consistently hear his voice? Anybody would like to know what the Bible says about that? Yes. Not just Pastor Nate says about that? Me too. All right. Um, so uh, let's see here. Let me get, jump down to these notes because I kind of rearranged them just sitting on the front row. Um, uh, thank you, Lord. All right. Second Corinthians. Okay. So yeah. So, so here's what, here's the deal. We talked about this a little bit ago about how Satan tries to get those three thoughts into our mind, because if he can get those thoughts and he can get you to conceive the thought that, oh, that was me or I don't hear or, um, uh, or that, uh, that was, I didn't hear right. That was me. Or I don't hear. I can't remember how I said them earlier because I have to go over my notes. But can, he gets us to receive that thought. Then here's what happens. We conceive it. It's one thing to receive it. It's another thing to conceive it. When you receive it, okay, to conceive a child means to bring it forth. I, not just, it, it means it comes in and now it begins to be formed. It, it's, it's not just, okay, there was a planting, but there was a planting, but there was a planting and a receiving. That's what it means to conceive. It means to bring it in. I want to read the definition. It means to become pregnant with. Not just that it was planted, but that you received it. Okay? To think or believe, and I, and I wrote this or highlighted this part, means to form. Satan will bring you the same thing over and over and again until he can get you to form a stronghold in your life. 2 Corinthians 10, 3-5 says this. We are, we are human, but we do not wage war as humans. This is out of the New Living Translation. It says we use God's mighty weapons not worldly weapons, to knock down the strongholds, that which has been built, okay? That's if you, have, if you were to write a little thing in your Bible. Strongholds are things that have been built of human reasoning. Yep. Of human reasoning. To, to knock down the strongholds or that which has been built of human reasoning. Hey, you can't hear. And so guess what? We want to sometimes uh, attribute all of our problems in life to the devil. But yeah, he planted the thought but you conceived it. Yeah. You allowed it to be formed because you received it. Yeah. You don't have to receive every thought of the enemy. That's right. I mean, anybody ever drove, been driving down the road in here? Uh, just drive off the road right now. Like just a thought out of left field. And, and I see you're all still here. So you must not have operated on that. Yeah. So, but 
but that we, we had a, the ability to either receive and then conceive, bring it about, bring forth, but we didn't. Well, guess what? Guess what? We understand that the, the, the strongholds in our life are those things that are, have been built. And again, that stronghold, think of it just like a fort that's in your mind that the enemy hides so that when God comes, he can come right out and immediately come snatch the word. We'll look at that in a moment in Mark 4, how immediately he comes and snatches it out. All right. So three things that we must settle if we're going to hear God's voice. Number one, three things that we must settle if we're going to hear God's voice. Number one is, that, is this, is that he's my father and I'm his child. He's my father, I'm his child. That's just one. If he's my father, I'm his child. He's not, it's not just Jesus' father, it's my father. He said it's our father who art in heaven. He said if you know how to give good gifts to your children and you being evil, how much more does our father know how to give uh, he, our, it's inclusive. I'm his child, say that with me, I'm his child, he's my father. So if I'm going to hear his voice, i got to settle that one, number one. i got to settle this one. And, I, and I, if you want a scripture, Matthew 7, 7 through 11, talks about what I just kind of quoted about at knocking and asking and seeking and us being evil. But at number two, we got to settle this, that God is speaking. There's a lot of Christians that don't believe God's really speaking anymore. There's a lot of people that in order to hear God's voice, you've got to know that you're his, his child. He's the father and he desires to speak to you. But number two, you've got to believe that he's still speaking. Now, I want to give you scripture on this that I think is, is so good. John 16, 13. Not only is he still speaking, he wants to speak to you. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth, comes, Jesus said this in John 14. It's better that I go away because I'm going to send you a helper. Anybody need some help? Well, the helper's job, which is the Holy Spirit, is to lead and guide us into all truth and remind us of everything he said. Well, he goes on and he expounds on that. It was in John chapter 14. And just a couple ch chapters over in John chapter 16, verse 13, he says this. But when he, not it, okay? The Holy Spirit's not a it. When he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all truth. And he will not speak on his own, but he will, what? What will he do? Oh, there's somebody speaking to you. Did you know that it's not Jesus that speaks to you? It's the Spirit of God that speaks to you? Did you know that what was speaking to, to, to Jesus was, was the Holy Ghost through the Father? We, we, we have even our theology messed up. Or in other words, understanding what the Word says. What speaks to you? Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. Omnipresent, what, what's with you and lives inside of you and dwells inside of you is the Spirit of God. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. So I don't understand why we, we, we're, we're, we want something in us getting saved, but we're afraid to have something on us. And the Holy Spirit has been so hammered down in, in churches because it's all about what you don't understand. Well, let me tell you, what God speaks to you primarily is about what you don't understand. But what the enemy speaks to you primarily is about what you see. Because otherwise, it takes no faith to believe what, what you already see, does it? Satan, Satan talks about what you see, but God talks about what you can't see. And so I guess you and I, we, we really do need not only to have the Holy Spirit in us, but on us. Because when it's in us, it's for us. But when it's on us, it's for others. So how much, I mean, are we, are we, are we a follower of Jesus or are we a Christian? People ask questions all the time. Well, can I be a Christian and do this? Well, I suppose you might be able to be a Christian and do that, but you can't follow Jesus and do that. Do you want to be a Christ follower? This is what the vision and the mission of this church is, is to know him and make him known. To know him, I have to have fellowship with him. To have fellowship with him, I have to follow him. And i got to have the Holy Ghost. You know why? i got to have him in me, but I want him on me because I see there's a, something that's in me called the love of God. When I've been born again, the love of God comes and, and, and settles in my heart, and now... Because the love of God's in me, I cannot be satisfied by anything other than that what satisfies God's love. Because that's now in me. So now when I see other people hurting, there's something that wants to do something to see that person out of that wheelchair. Something wants to see something, to, to see that. Something, in, and, and I can't do it. But I want it. And this is why 
the Holy Spirit has been so downplayed because he says, you know what? I'm going to take it a step further than getting it on you so that you can see. Because when any time the Holy Spirit shows up, if he shows up on Sunday morning here, when he shows up, when the word of God's taught, the Holy Spirit's moving. But you want to know how you've, you've experienced the Holy Spirit? The Bible says in uh, Acts chapter 1, he says, you shall have received power to do what? To be a witness when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. If you are not have no power to testify or be a witness in any form, you're lacking the ministry of the Holy Spirit in your life, whether you've been filled or with the, whether you speak it in tongues or not. Yeah. But he take it a step further. Listen, Satan wants to take it a step further in the church. He wants to take it. So you know what? Okay, I, heard, I, got, I got the majority of the church to not want to yield to the Holy Spirit, whether it's speaking in tongues or being the gifts of the Spirit. Okay, healings, prophecy, all these kind of things. He's got the church, majority of the church, saying, ah, I just don't know about that because it's kooky, and I, don't, I just don't know about that because what if that happens, and what if, and we don't understand that God's, God is good, and his character is good, and all these things, and if he's moving, he's about good. Could we miss it? Absolutely. But if we give our permission, self-permission to miss it, and we, we can we operate light years ahead of where we're at. Yeah. But he, Satan's not just, just say, okay, I got majority of the church there. Now he's saying, what used to be basic in hearing God's voice, he says, I got the Holy Spirit off of them, but now I'm going to attack what's in them. I'm going to attack what's in them and, and talk about the Holy Spirit as being such a thing that you don't want to mention. We just talk about Jesus. We're just only going to talk about Jesus. But Jesus is at the right hand of the Father, y'all. But he's given us one that, that's our comforter and that's with us all the time. And it's the Spirit of God that speaks the Word of God to us. Yeah, but if you say Holy Spirit in the church, you might lose half of your church. Huh? How many of you know what I'm talking about? Anybody, anybody a little bit kind of know what I'm talking about? Raise your hand. I want to see some hands this morning. Make sure you're awake. Okay? Yeah. So this is the, this is the enemy's ploy. He wants to take from you your helper. Which is the one that, how does he bring help? By speaking. By reminding us things to come, to showing us future. God wants to speak to you at every turn. At everything you purchase, at every decision you make, at the words that you come out of your mouth concerning your, your family when they're at your holiday get together, and at the cash register. He wants to speak to you concerning the money that's in your hand and that God has a plan for it. And sometimes the reason we're, we seem like always fall short is because we're eating our seed and he's desiring for us to plant it because God, there's a way that seems right to a man, but the end is wrong. But he says, there's a way, my way, which is higher than right here. It's, what do you mean it's higher than right here? All I can get is right here. No, it's a whole lot higher. It's, it's a highway. It's, it's his way. It's a spirit way. And so this is why the, the, the Spirit of God has been so attacked. The Holy Spirit has been so attacked. And I think if there's something that we could settle in our lives today that would create the greatest breakthrough in our own lives, it was we would say yes to the Holy Spirit, and we'd say, yes, I want all of the Holy Spirit. Because if, that, if God gave that to me as a helper, one of the number one reasons I don't hear God the way I should is because I'm afraid of what somebody else might think, and I've turned down and listened to what Satan said about the Holy Spirit, God's helper. He's a liar, you know? So, God's still speaking, and he wants to speak to me. How do I know that? Because he gave me the Holy Spirit, and he said that his is what his job is going to be. He's going to lead and guide me into all truth, John 16, 13. Uh, lead and guide me into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak only what he hears to me. He will tell you what is yet to come. What if you knew what was yet to come? Doesn't it seem like that that's what always produces the most fear in our life? What's yet to come? It's not, it's not yesterday that so much produces the fear. It's not even today. It's what's going to happen in the next few moments. It's what's going to happen when I get to that job interview when they called me and said, hey, I'd like to see you in my office this morning. Oh, I just don't know. I just don't know. Oh, I, I can't even show up to work. You know what I'm talking about? There's so many things. Oh, I just got a doctor's report. I don't know. And, and there's things, and all of a sudden there's things and released in our, in our bodies because of the fear and the torment that are producing things, a havoc in our body. God's good. All right, and he's still speaking. So number one, he's my father, and I'm his child. Number two, that God's still speaking, and he wants to speak to me. Number three, that, and this might sound so simple, but again, we've got to settle this. All, all of his plans and desires for me are good. All of them. Guys, all of them are good. 
If I, I got to settle this in my heart that he's my, he's my father, I'm his child, that he desires to speak to me, and that all of his plans for me are good. If I settle that, he'll speak. He'll speak. Let me re- read a couple of the things I wrote down for that, and we'll talk about how, why sometimes we, we don't hear him speak, is the fact that he's not talking. Oh, Pastor Nate, are you going to really say that maybe God's not talking? God is not going to tell you something to do that you're not willing to do. If you're not willing, if you don't know that all God's plans for you are good, then you come into saying, God, speak to me, and I'll tell you if I want to do it or not. Well, if you're not willing, he's like, he'll tell you once, hey, sell all that you have and go give it to the poor. And then we want to go ask him again. Okay, Lord, what do you want to really, I, need, I really need you to come through. And he said, I, I told you, I talked to you. I, I talked to you concerning that and, what, and the way you're handling your body. You know, anybody ever had direction from the Lord concerning just even what you're putting in this temple? And he says, hey, you lay that down. And where, where his word is, his grace is. His ability is right there. If you receive, I'd re- okay, I receive it. I, I have to be willing, and I have to, I have to understand that I'm his, I'm, his fa- I'm his child. He's my father. God's still speaking, and that all of his plans are good. And because I know all of his plans are good, I come in, in advance going, yep, whatever you say, just tell me what to do. I'll, I'll do it. Wherever you send me, Lord, I'll go. Whatever you want, I'll do. Because that's what he wants for us, good. We read the scripture all the time, but if we don't really get it in our hearts, it says, for I know the thoughts I think toward you, says the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you future and a hope. And I, we talked about this a little bit earlier, but you could write this down again. When the character of God is in question in our lives, his voice is silenced. When we're not sure that what God has to say is for our good, what happens is he says something to us and he gives us a direction, but we're not willing. God can't do anything else. Out of the side of his will. So once he comes to you with his will, what do you want him to say? What you want? The, the way that seems right to you, but the end leads to the wrong? What do you want him to say? Man, I'll tell you, you want to hear God talk to you at a greater rate and a greater level than he ever has before? Go to the last thing he said to you and do it. And you just watch. He orders your steps. If he orders our steps... And he shot, his, light, his word is a, a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, but I'm not willing to walk on what he said. I, can, I, I can't go any further than where I'm at. But when I say yes, okay, all of a sudden I start walking in the new and I see further down the road and I wonder when I'm going to get there. The little glimpse he sh- showed me in my heart, and it has to do with that step of what he said. Hey, make that adjustment there. Hey, do you, you, you know what I'm talking about. Okay, let's keep on going here. God knows the uh, plans he has for you. Now, that's great, but how many of you know it's good for us to know as well? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. And so um, we'll talk, uh, talk a little bit about, about that. So we know that God leads the same way uh, that you got born again is that still small voice. Okay? In 1 Kings 19, and we're going to talk about hearing God's voice now. So how do I know he's speaking to me? Okay? Well, you're his child. You've got to know that he still wants to, and you've you got to know that his things are good. Otherwise, you're going to close your ears. Okay? Um, but how, I, what does his voice sound like? Help, help me, Lord. Help me hear. Or not help me, Lord. Yeah, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord, to hear from you. Like, what does the word say about hearing his voice? First Kings 19, 11 through 13. This is, and he said, okay, the prophet said to him, go out and stand, or this is the Lord, go out and stand before the mountain of the Lord, okay? And behold, the Lord passed by in a great strong wind tore the mountain and broke the rock into pieces before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. Let me tell you what the Lord's not in. The Lord's not in the wind. The Lord is not in the storm. Okay? Well, you know, I, I must not be able to hear. Maybe I just can't hear God because of the storm. The storm is not God. God didn't cause the storm. So the storm's not God. The, the storm, it goes on to say that there was a great earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. It goes on to say there was a great fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. But it says this. It says, but the Lord, after all of that, there was a still small voice, a still small voice. You know, like even right now that I want to talk to you. Like, I'm so glad I'm here because he's about to tell me some things that I've had questions about. And he said, just listen. You know, you just you feel that in your heart. That I want to talk to you. That I love you. I, I got good plans for you. That, that, that right here, right here, the still small voice. This is what it, this is, what it is. And so what is, that's his voice. And he speaks where? Not to our ears. He doesn't talk to our ears. I'd say very rarely has anybody ever had the Lord come up and say, hey, 
He did that in the Old Testament because there wasn't the Spirit of God within us. I just want it like it was in the Old Testament. That's a poor, poor half piece part sampling of what God has today. He gave us the Holy Spirit where he's never going to leave us and he's never going to forsake us. He's always with us to guide and to show us and everything. And the Spirit of God, he said, it's not only with the temple in you, but he said, I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to be rest upon you to be a witness. Why do I want just the, the God, presence of God coming to me to say something to me in a, once in a lifetime? Instead of every day and everything I have to face in life. So he speaks in our heart. The Holy Spirit, the temple, he, he dwells in us. So if he dwells in us, what, is that, what does that voice sound like? Or if he's going to speak to our heart, what do we got to guard? We got to guard our heart, don't we? I want to talk about guarding our heart just for a moment, and then I want to talk about what I'll end with what God's voice sounds like. Mark chapter 4, and I'm not going to take a lot of time here. And these are the conditions that keep us from hearing from God. These are the conditions. Now I'm going to talk about what God's voice sounds like, and then we'll talk about the conditions, and we'll close. Okay. Number one, we've got to remember that God always leads. He always leads through peace. The Word of God, when it's spoken, is always, it always brings peace. It always brings peace. So if the Lord's speaking to you, and it creates fear, now listen, when God here's he, he brings peace, and what God brings when He brings peace is a direction. The direction, listen, should always bring peace. Questions, because the Lord always comes with a direction. He doesn't come with a, the question. The question will produce fear. So remember, the Lord leads with peace, but he leads with a direction. I wish I could take time and give you all uh, the, so many scriptures that, that uphold these. Um, we understand this. Sometimes the greatest uh, way to recognize God's voice is recognizing who he's not. If, it, if he's coming to produce death, steal, steal your joy. Because again, what is it? Love gives you a word, which is how faith comes. Faith comes how? By hearing. Well, you mean God wants me to hear? Absolutely. Why? Because he wants victory in your life. Why? Because Why? this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. So love gives you a word which produces faith, and that faith produces hope. If it's producing in you like stealing from you, stealing your joy, or, 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 or killing a, a hope in your life, or causing destruction. Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I've come and to give you life and give it abundance. Oh, yeah, I'll have that. If it's any of those three things, steal, kill, or destroy, that's not God. Enemy always, uh, the Lord always comes with a direction. The enemy always comes with a question. And remember that he speaks to our hearts. So we're going to talk about what are the enemies that are keeping. It sounds so simple that he's, he gives us a direction. That's how God comes. He comes. To, he leads through peace. He, he guides. He doesn't push. You got to do it now. If you got to do it now, wait. If you got to do it now, are you going to miss the deal? It's not God. I can tell you how many times I made the wrong decision because I just had to do it now. I had to just hurry, 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 hurry. But I can also tell you how many times when, when we're going to buy this car. But oh, my wife says, I just don't have peace with that. And there's been times, likewise with me, I just don't, I don't think we should do that now. And, and the Lord saved us from heartache and gave us a better thing because we weren't pushed. Got to do it now. So what are the enemies? What are the enemies of your life and my life? Mark chapter 4, and we're going to only go through a couple of deals. If he speaks to our heart and he doesn't speak to our ears, there's some enemies that are keeping us. How do I know if God's speaking to me? Because I want to hear his voice. Help me hear his voice. These are the questions that come. How, help me, please. Help me. Can somebody help me hear God's voice? If he's speaking to our hearts, we know that the conditions of our heart can have a great effect on us hearing. And not, even, not only hearing, but us receiving and keeping See, some, there's a lot of times God speaks to us in a service and we walk out that door and we don't know what he said. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's like, oh, God, it's so good. I'm going to take a moment. I want to look at these, couple of, these three conditions of the heart. Three conditions of the heart. Number one, 
talks about in Mark chapter 4, he talks about the, the closed heart. Mark chapter 4, verse 13. He says this, if you don't know this, guys, this right here is the foundation of knowing everything God is saying. He says, if you don't know this, how will you understand anything that I'm saying? If you don't understand this parable that I'm speaking, he says, how will you understand anything that I ever speak to you? In other words, you won't be able to hear it. You won't be able to know it. You won't be able to perceive it or understand it. You'll be, you might be able to hear it, but you'll say, well, was that God or was that me? Oh, man. He says this. Know you not this parable, how will you understand all things? He says, the sower sows the word. Okay? This is what he comes with. He comes to sow the word. And he says, these are those on the wayside. So this is a, these are all talking about conditions of the heart. Sometimes we don't hear God speak because our heart's just hard. It's on the wayside. We don't want to let God in. And we, don't, we're, we might not even think, you know, I don't even know that he wants to speak to me because of where I'm at. Or we have a hard heart because we have walls up and we have a hard heart because we've built walls of offense. Listen to me. Walls of unforgiveness towards other people. We don't know his love. This is that foundation. You, you can't, you can't have faith if you don't have love because it, it shuts off his voice. And this is why he tells us, hey, when you come praying, when you come praying, if there is a fence in your life, if there's a wall in your life, if you have unforgiveness towards that family member, towards that co-worker, towards anybody, forgive them. Because you're going to come talking to me and it's just going to be idle. And you're going to say, where are you, God? And then you're going to start blaming me for not talking. When the condition is not on his end, it's on our end. And the heart's hard. And it says that the, these are the conditions, or these are what happened. It says, by the wayside, by the hard soil, by the hard heart, the word is sown. So it's God's still talking. God still, he still sows the word. He says, but you can't hear it. You can't receive it. And it says, and when they heard it, Satan comes immediately and takes away the word that was sown in their heart. You ever sat in a service because things that are going on on the inside, you leave and you, you might as well have not gone that day? Sometimes we don't recognize that about ourselves, but we can sure recognize that about our friends or our spouse that are sitting next to us or we know that, oh, they're here today. I hope they hear this. Anybody ever, and, and I'm not, not saying out of a bad place, like, oh, they need to hear this. I'm saying, oh, yes. Oh, that was such a word from God. I know it's going to change. And they walk out. And they're the same. Immediately, Satan snatched that word because their heart's hard. I don't know that God wants to talk to me. I don't want to hear him. Or there's walls and hard walls, offenses that are in our lives. So there's that, number one, that keeps us from hearing God. Number two, rocky soil. Rocky soil, it goes on to say this in verse 16. And these likewise... So again, dealing with the heart are those that are, are on stony ground. Now, the stony ground is not like you would see in a farm field when they plow and there's a couple of rocks, you know, where you got to pick the rocks out because you're going to get a harvest because there's only a few rocks. The stony ground has to do with the ground that has a very shallow depth. Some of us uh, have experienced very shallow depth of ground trying to build a pond. You got a little bit of soil and then there's a rock bed. You know what I'm talking about? You know your septic system? And you have, you have that septic tank box that in summer, when summer happens, there's about this much earth over the top of that septic tank, and there's a square brown patch in the summer. Why? Because, because of the rocky ground there. The ground is rocky. There's only this much soil. There's only this much soil. And so oftentimes, God comes and he says something to us, but we don't, we, we receive it immediately with gladness. It goes on to say, and they have heard it, immediately receive it with gladness. But guess what happens? They have no root in themselves. There's no root to receive that. You know, that was really God speaking to me. Yeah, God really is that good. And so in a moment of God's love, we sense his love and kindness and goodness and emotion and this is what happens. We hear, and God speaks, and there's this emotional roller coaster. We do this in church a lot. And God's so good, and we're trying. And we walk out after God deposited something so great in our hearts. And because there's no root, 
in ourselves being a child of God, that he loves me, that he wants to speak to me, I walk out of this church and the piano is not playing and real life starts to happen and all of a sudden I'm faced with something and I question the very thing that was spoken to me with such clarity. God was speaking. Guys, God's speaking today. He's talking to you about specific things that I didn't even say. And he's talking. Let us get a little deeper in the root of ourselves and who we are in him as a child of the king, of the father. And we'll leave here changed. And we'll make some things and we'll rearrange those things in our life according to what he spoke to us. So we can't be so superficial or shallow, the shallow heart. We talked about the hard heart or the closed heart. I'm closed. I'm closed off. I got an offense. I don't want you to hurt me. No one's going to hurt me again. I don't want, I'm not sure that God even wants to talk to me. And if he does, I'm not sure that he's good. The closed heart. We got the shallow heart where we hear it in a moment, but we're not, uh, we're not sure of God's love for us. I'm talking about, trying to, about hearing God's voice. And then number three is the crowded heart. And this one... This one is the one that makes his heart break, I think, more than any other. I mean, all of them. But this one is like this. And these are those which are sown among thorns, such as hear the word, and the cares of this world, and the deceitfulness of riches, and the lust of other things does what? It chokes them out, or they become unfruitful. Chokes them out. So this is the crowded heart. Anybody got a crowded heart? Anybody got a, I mean, this is one that's all, all the time crowded. This is so easy. I want to crowd your life. Bible says, guard your heart with all diligence, Proverbs chapter 4. Guard your heart or guard your focus. This is the crowded focus. He's the crowded heart. Our focus is on so many things that God can't get a word in edgewise. That's how he wants to speak to us. But here's what happens. He, 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 it's so crowded that God's words come to us and we receive them with gladness and they begin to grow, but they never grow up and bear fruit in our lives because they get crowded. They get crowded, here's how, by neglect. Weeds in your life and my life, in any garden, is a sign of neglect. How many, how many people do you know, you could raise your hand for yourself, I'm not asking for a hand raise, but you know, you could raise, I know somebody like that, you know, it's probably, probably you, that had been excited about the word of God in your life, has been excited about God's direction concerning your life, been just so stirred up in your heart, just so God's so good, he's talking, everything, it's an open heaven, and it's like, yes, and life goes on. And life goes on. And for a moment in the season, it's growing, and you're, yes, but guess what? You get busy. And so guess what? Along with that time that you need to spend with the Lord where he's talking, and we'll talk about those three things, positioning yourself to hear in a moment, and that's it, we'll close. What happens is, is we put that there, and then something comes up, so we schedule that there, and so ine- ine- inevitably we put that there, and that there, and it's kind of like if you put God here in the center, and then you put another thing, and then you put another thing, and then you put another thing, and what falls off? Him. He knows he understands, and this is where this heart is that, that knows God loves them. They know that. And so here's what, what, our, what our, our, our statement is. Well, God knows, and he understands. Absolutely he does. He knows, and he understands. But do you understand what, what you're not able to partake of? How, how the plan of God for your life is literally being stopped, and frustration and lack of fellowship is opening the door. It's, it's it's, it's allowing the enemy to come in and do what? Not, not you not to see what God brought to you. I'm telling you, fellowship, a choked, a choked heart or, or a too busy heart. I'll tell you what, we got to take, take some time to check, about, check our heart and our focus. What, what is it crowded with? What is, it, what is the first thing you check? When you wake up in the morning, is it what he has to say or is it what somebody else has to say concerning the red dots? I know we talk about social media all the time, but why are we talking about it? Because it's a problem. It's crowded. It's crowding our life. You could be sitting next to that person in the bed 
and not saying a word because somebody else is talking. Well, if you're right next to them and they're talking into your ear and you can't hear that because of this, because of Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever it might be, do you think that could also maybe be hindering what God is trying to talk to you if he speaks in a still small voice? I think so. It's crowding our lives. And the things that matter really don't matter. But they matter. God, God's word does matter. So we're, talk, we're going to close with this. Hearing God's voice in our life. Hearing God's voice. What do I do to hear his voice? Number one, I read his word. This is hilarious. But we don't, we don't, we don't realize how valuable his word is. The honor that we've given this, his word to us is poor. I'm talking to me. I'm talking to the church. The honor, the value of his word has been so diminished in our lives, it's ridiculous. At the beginning of the year, we're working on it right now. We're going to do, um, we're going to, as a church, we're going to be doing a one, one year or two year chronological Bible reading program as a church, coupled with uh, what we've been working on, um, and we have already have the full year in advance of daily devotions. So along with the daily devotion, there'll be a reading of chronological Bible. Like so you can see how it was written. You can see Psalms that were written right in Kings. Like David was writing about God restoring his soul right in the middle of this battle. And, and, God, and you're like, wow, wow. And, and, but I'll tell you what, how many, you know, read, anybody in here read the whole Bible? I bet very few people in here have read the whole Bible. Why? Well, because I'm busy. Because i got too many things to do. So number one, if you want to hear God speak, you read the Word. Because the Bible says His Word is alive, it's powerful, it's alive. It's alive. And the Holy Spirit can't speak anything but God's Word. So here's the other thing. A lot of times, this will answer that question in the beginning. One, two, three. Is God speaking to me, or is that just me? Well, does it line up with His Word? Well, I don't know. Your relationship with the Lord is limited to the level of your understanding and knowledge of the Word. And we have so many relationships in the body of Christ that are so shallow because our depth of honor for the Word is this. Only what I get on Sunday? You can't build a relationship like that. Satan will get in all the time. All week he'll get in and he'll be just wreaking havoc in your life. And God won't leave you. He'll love you. And he's always there sending out his hand. Can you imagine all week you going and cheating on your wife and she still stands there or your husband and he's still standing there I love you. Yeah, but you don't know what I did. I know, but I love you. This is God. Well, what does he have to say if he's saying that after I've done that? What does he have to say all week? What does he, we got to increase this, guys. We got to increase. And then, you know, sometimes we're looking for the Lord. I'll get, I could give you a scripture here. You can look it up. I'm going to give it to you. You know, we're looking for the Lord. We're like, God, speak to me. You know, the Bible says that he inhabits the praises of his people. You want to hear from God? Worship him. The Bible says that there's a day that's coming where those that worship him must worship him, what? In spirit. Matter of fact, says the day is now here. That those that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. I want to read it verbatim because I, I think... Um, it says this, John 4, 23, a time is coming and now has come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth, for they are the kind of worshipers that the, listen, underline this in your Bible, take this down, that the Father seeks. You want to seek God? That's great. You want him to seek you? Worship. Put on some worship in the car. Shut off the country crap. I'm not saying I, 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 there's things I'm like, oh, yeah, I love listening to some of that stuff because I'm like, oh, yeah, I can totally relate to that. Yeah, but God doesn't want us relating to this. He wants us relating to this. I mean, I understand. I mean, I, 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 li- I understand. I like that, the tune and the flair, and yeah, I get that. But that should not be what we're feeding on. It should not be our day in and day out deposits in our life. It should be Let's worship him. What is it that ministers to you? What, what songs are, are they? Are they on your iPod? Do you have a phone? Can you plug it in your, your car? Because he's seeking those. Man, oh, I want him to seek me. I, I, I love him. I, I want to seek him. But what if he could seek me? He says he will. 
those that worship him. So number one, read the word. If you want to hear his voice at a greater level, read the word because he's limited to the amount of word that you have in your life. Number two, worship him. You'll find that the, the, the doors open, heaven opens as you worship him. And you might find this kind of funny, but um, the last one is this. Plant yourself in a church. You want to hear God speak to you? You want to hear him develop you? You Plant yourself in a church. We talked a little bit about this. What did he ask? What did he tell us to do? What did he last tell us to do? We want to know about this, this, and this, and this, but why would he lead you in something that's taken you further and further from his plan when he said, I want you and the gifts in you deposited in a body, planted in a church, and being fed, listen, this is the mission and the vision of this church, not that we would bring the world to the church, but that we would bring the church to the world. When the world comes in the church, they should know him, not what they already know, not something that's just like that, but they should experience and know they're not looking for an explanation, they're looking for an experience with him. And we have the ability to, to have that every time when we come together and we seek him and worship him in spirit and in truth, not concerned about what somebody else thinks. He says, I seek that and I pour out on that. And you know what they're looking for? They're looking to be healed, something I can't produce. I can produce something that sounds good. I can produce a three-point message that takes 35 minutes so you make sure you get to La Fiesta on time. But you know what I need? I need to experience Him. I need Him to talk to me and talk to you right where I'm at. So get planted in a place. And I'm not talking about planted. I'm talking about full in, all in. Where am I using my gift? Because as I make and deposit my gift, oh my gosh, He can... My gift is not for me. you got to understand that. There are things that he's, he's like, oh, yes. And he starts pour, pouring into you, pouring into you, pouring into you, speaking to you about this because you're on the path, on the path. As you see the day approaching, I think it's approaching. As you see the day approaching, do not forsake the assembly of yourself. Listen to me. I'm not just talking to you. I'm not just talking to you. I'm talking to you, but I want to talk to those you know through you. Who is not there that was there, that's not, not, not here or not in another church, but I'm saying not in a chair, not in a place, giving of their supply and literally drying up. Last scripture, I'll close with this and I'll read the example. Psalms 92, 11 through 13. My eyes have seen the defeat of my adversaries. My ears have heard the, uh, the rod of my wickedness. The righteous will flourish like a palm tree, it says. And they will grow like a cedar of Lebanon, planted where? In the house of the Lord. You want, you want somebody's life to produce fruit, to, to grow, to be alive and, and see hope in their eyes? There is nothing more that grabs my heart and hurts my heart than anything when hope is not in somebody's eyes. Yeah, I can't give them hope. God can. It's produced by his love for them, them knowing that, and him knowing that opens that door for him to speak and bring a word concerning their health, bring a word concerning their finances, bring a word concerning wherever they're at and the muck that they're in and what the enemy meant for evil, God's working it for good, and what, they, what the canker worms ate and what this, all this seemed like destruction. He says, I'm restoring it back. How could God do that? Because God is good. Because he's able and he's willing because God is so good. He wants to talk to us. So how do I know if God's talking to me? He's talking. He's speaking. Settle that in your heart right now. How do you know he's talking? Because he's my father and I'm his child. And when I settle those two things and I understand that he's good, it'll cause me to find out what he's saying. And when I find out what he's saying, it'll cause me just to worship him that much more. And I'll find myself in his presence where fullness of joy is. And it'll cause me to get in my seat and be serving. And hey, you got to come experience this. Hey, you got to come experience this. Hey, you got to come experience God. You got to, hey, come be part of the rescue with me. Guys, building the church, it's not up to us. Listen, it's up to him through us. But we have to go out. I'm not putting the pressure on me to try to fill these seats. I'm putting the pressure on you and not you. Listen, to be the light. 
Guys, we've sat too long in the church and not, not had any, any demand made on us. We just say, hey, I'm so glad you came and you stayed for 45 minutes of the message and then walked out the back door because, you know, you want to make sure you got your seat. We're just so glad to have you. I understand. And we're talking to church people. Guys, listen, I'm talking to church now. It, hey, thank you so much for sweeping half of the stairs. That was so wonderful. Thank you for, so much for taking out two of the garbage cans. That's, we're, we're, we're not making a demand. And you know what? When there's no demand made on us, we never come up to the level that God desires. How do I hear God's voice? I hope I covered it. I hope the word spoke. I know it did. Let's just stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And I know this was a little bit longer one, but this is asked by a lot of people. How do I hear God's voice? What if just one of those things is the one that you needed to hear? You know? Amen. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, we love you so much. We love you so much. And we just lift our hands to you this morning. Every one of us, let's just lift our hands to him. And we say thank you. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you that I know your voice and the strangers I don't follow. Thank you, Lord. You know, you might be here this morning and the Lord's talking to you right now, tugging on you and saying, hey, I've never got to talk to you like I want to. But right now, he's tugging on your heart saying, hey, come to me. I want a relationship with you. Make me your Lord today. Make me your Savior. For some of you, you're saying, gosh, I never knew he was that good that he wants the relationship with me. I, I've been saved, but I haven't, haven't walked with him. But I want to do that today. If that's you in your heart, just this is for salvation. This is also for a rededication of your number one in your life being God. I want you to lift both hands as high as you can to him. I'm going to pray a prayer with you. And just say this with me. Say, Father, thank you for coming again to me. Thank you that my hands raised are because I heard. <laughs> and I hear your voice because you love me, because I'm your child, because you're my father. Today, I call you my Lord. I call you my Savior. I will serve you all the days of my life. You are victorious. You defeated death and Satan. And because he's defeated, he's defeated in my life. Right now, with my hands raised, I receive healing. Ha <laughs> ha. Just lift your hands. If you need healing in your body right now, just lift your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, with hands raised, those that need healing in their body, I thank you right now. Go into them right now. Receive in it. Right now. In Jesus' name, I thank you for answers and wisdom. If you need wisdom, just lift your hands to him right now. Thank you. If you need wisdom concerning a decision, and concerning a business transaction, concerning anything, concerning your ch children, whatever it might be, you need wisdom. You say, Lord, I need wisdom. He said, he that lacks wisdom, let him ask. And he said, you give it liberally. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, to those that have their hands up and are desiring wisdom, Father, we thank you and come in agreement with your word. And we thank you for liberal amounts of wisdom applied now in Jesus' name. And you don't no longer, you do not know, you, you know. Oh, I know. I know, and I thank you for the spirit of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of truth that's leading and guiding their very every move. And I thank you because they're asking of you that their eyes and their focus would be on you in the moment of decision and that you lead and guide them. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you that we don't leave this place the same. Thank you, Lord. We apply the blood of Jesus over this word that you spoke to our hearts. And we thank you continue speaking as we walk out those doors. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, this